what makes Averitt's theater program unique is that in four years, incoming students can do 20 productions. Well, we're small, but we do five shows a year. So we'll do two straight plays, we'll do a children's theater production, we'll do a musical theater cabaret, and then we'll do a large musical. So there's always opportunities for all of our students. What brought me to Averitt was definitely probably the smaller class sizes, being able to get that one-on-one -on -one with the professors and getting that mentoring and the chance of opportunity. Because at the school I transferred from, I had no opportunity. I was just another number. So at most schools, you have to wait until you're a sophomore to perform. But here at Averitt, you can get cast as a freshman coming in and you get the opportunity to do 20 plus shows over your four years of being here. And not only do you get the opportunity to perform, you also get the opportunity opportunity to learn how to do lighting, costume, crew work, and a bunch of other things. I enjoy learning um, all the different aspects in theater. I enjoy learning how to sing because I didn't know I could sing till I got here. I learned how to dance. I also learned tech. I learned how to work the lights and was able to also help backstage and work on some costume designing. Because we're a small theater program, all of our students have to do everything. So just because you're a BFA musical theater doesn't mean that you're not going to be downstairs sewing costumes or working in the scene shop building sets. So therefore, when you graduate in four years, you're a Swiss Army knife of theater. I came to Averitt. Is maybe a better musician because it's given multiple experiences that I did not had in high school? We have small classes and lots of individualized attention for each student. There's no class with more than 20. As far as music majors, that means they get a lot of close-knit advising and information from the faculty. They get leadership opportunities they might not have at a larger school. For example, our conducting students are on the podium working with a real live band, full concert band, their very first semester in conducting classes. That does not happen maybe ever at a larger music school. I'm a part of Apex Singers. I've been there for so long, it feels like finally. We laugh, we sing, and most importantly, we share one thing, and that's music. We really take that short amount of time and produce music. It's been practicing. It's really wonderful to like, get, get everybody in, make this great school of music. The only reason that they should consider a function has, like everything on this phone, is it's small. It's not a huge group of like 30 point people that we move into an ensemble. We're a small net team, we're like a big So it gives you the mindset that you're at home. What makes the art program here at Avery unique is that we have a wide variety of instructors, full time faculty members, and hosts of adjunct uh, assistance from the community to give a wide range of experiences and perspectives to incoming students. We also have a unique opportunity to be marrying a traditional kind of bohemian fallout shelter, modern traditional studio practice, and analog painting sculpture with new digital design and animation. Students should give Arts at Averitt a look uh, because there's tremendous institutional support. Every semester, art is going up here on campus. You make it, it displays. You make it, it displays up in Danville. I've always loved art. I grew up with art. And when I knew that they had the art department, it's actually growing. So I was very interested in that. And I just wanted to make sure I pursue it for my career. I didn't decide to minor in art until I went to the first art club meeting, and I was hooked. It's just, it's a very encouraging environment where I feel like I can be myself and I can express myself however I want to. And not only are we encouraged to learn academically and grow, but we are encouraged to work on our own personal artwork, and it has grown my confidence so much. Favorite as is like right now, it's small. and the art comedy is quite small. Also, when it's a family atmosphere around art, it kind of builds a closer and you can build better connections with everybody. You'll come to Averitt, you'll explore your own aesthetic experience, but you'll be ready to work uh, and get a job on graduation. We look forward to welcoming you to the Averitt family. Good evening. Uh,
Welcome to the Averitt University Workshop. We have an excellent event that will cover fine arts program at Averitt University. The three celebrated departments that we will be highlighting today are theater, music, and fine arts in the art department. I'm gonna be your host, JP Novin, the CEO of Flexus Student Network. And I'm honored and excited to serve as a moderator for today's event. This workshop is scheduled to be 60 minutes long. Our meeting today will be divided into three informative segments. To kick things off, each of our esteemed panelists will provide insights for approximately 10 to 12 minutes to essential topics related to pursuing a fine arts degree. The second part of our presentations are questions and answers that will take place after all the panelists have presented. Please feel free to post your questions using the QA button that you see here on the, on, on the bottom. And we'll try to answer as many questions as possible. At the end of the event, we'll stay around for another 10, 15 minutes to answer any remnant questions that a, a parent or a student may have. Lastly, at the end of our session, we will highlight a few questions by our panelists, for our panelists to discuss, and we'll discuss the process of how you could qualify for a scholarship. We have an outstanding and diverse panel with us today. Joining us is Nate Lester, Hester, Chair of the Art Department, Giuseppe Ritorto, Associate Professor of Music Theater, Dr. Janet Phillips, Associate Professor of Music and Director of Bands, Matthew Mann, the Director of Admissions, and two distinguished alumni, Skyline Oswald and Riley Cooper, who will be presenting today. Without further delay, it is an honor to introduce our first panelist, Jessica Ritorto, who is an associate professor of musical theater. His expertise is in theater performance. Um, his expertise extends far beyond the stage. Jessica holds a BA in theater arts from Catwa College, as well as an MFA in musical theater. Theater. He has a degree from New York University Tisch School of the Arts with a rich and versatile career expanding over a decade. Jessica has immersed himself in various theater roles, including, including as a performer, lighting designer, sound designer, musical director, and a technical director. I would like to welcome Jessica to discuss his personal and professional background further and highlight the distinct experience you can have attending Averitt's musical theater department. Giuseppe? Hi, everyone. I'm Giuseppe. Uh, so just, you know, about me, when I was a student, I went to school wanting to do just musical theater. That was, that was what I wanted to do. And quickly, I discovered that I was good at musical theater, but I was also really good at lighting design and <clears throat> sound design. And I was an accomplished uh, keyboardist as well going to school. And my training encompassed all of that. And I use that now when I'm training, you know, my students here at Averitt. So it's looking at students coming in that want the BFA in musical theater, that want the BFA in acting, that want the BFA in directing, and looking at other skills that they may have as well, so that when they graduate in four years, that they could have, they could almost become like a Swiss army knife of theater. Uh, what's wonderful about the programs here at Averitt, we have the BFA in musical theater, in acting, in directing, in design and technical theater. We also offer the BA theater, which is the more general degree, just in case the student wants to minor in something as well. 
What I love about our program is that we're small. We have about 20 majors or so, and we do five shows a year. That's a, quite a lot. Looking at larger schools, you may not always get time on stage being a number, being one of 160 other performers. Here at Averitt, you're going to get plenty of stage time. Our calendar year kind of starts on a Wednesday. We usually have auditions on a Thursday. Students are moving in still to their, uh, their apartments. And then by Monday, at the beginning of the school year, they're rehearsing. Doing five shows a year, we do a children's show usually at the beginning. And that runs about three weeks for rehearsal and then a weekend of shows. But we'll bus in about 1,200 local middle school students to see that production. Then right after that show, we go into our musical theater review. And that's about another two and a half weeks of rehearsal for an hour long musical review that will be seen about about another you know 1200 people uh, throughout the community. Following that, we go directly into one of our plays. And then come the spring semester, we do another play. And then we do a large musical. It is a diverse season we try to find shows that fit the students that we have and i've been known to as we see incoming freshmen look at them and realize that you know what they need to star in a show right off the bat so that's one of the wonderful things about our our program is that freshmen will get stage time they will get plenty of performance opportunities. Looking at like the BFA in directing, you will have directing scenes at the end of the semester that are directed by the BFAs and they'll use all of the other majors as well. Looking at other performance opportunities that we have here, we also have the show choir. My friend Justin uh, Swan Hall and I decided that, you know what, Broadway isn't always the top. There are plenty of performance opportunities across the country at theme parks where you can make a wonderful living being a performer there. But we needed an outlet where to train these the, uh, the theme park performers. So we came up with an idea that we have a musical theater show choir. That show choir performs several times throughout the semester and then it finishes off the semester with a 45 minute nonstop production, which is it's pop and rock. It is dance. <clears throat> it's what you would do at a theme park. It is absolutely exciting. Another little highlight about our program for the musical theater students, you get musical theater lessons with myself for four years. And then you also get private voice lessons in the music department for four years. So with me, you're learning all of the pop, the rock, the jazz, how to sing, all of the real fun, high belty stuff. And then in the music department, you're learning the classical techniques, the support that you need. You're also getting dance instruction for four years. So you're getting the ballet, you're getting tap, you're getting jazz, you're getting hip hop. One of the wonderful things about our, our department that in four years one performer could have 20 shows on their resume and most of our students do but they're not going to be limited just to performance they're going to be working in the scene shop they're going to be working in the costume shop they're going to be working on the soundboard lighting designing as well it's a part of that being a well-rounded performer Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. Now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, Riley Riley Cooper, who is also an alumni, a favorite, is joining us today. He is a theater performer and a skilled carpenter who embarked on his journey after graduating from Averitt University with a BFA in directing 
Riley's passion for this stage led him to become a professional actor. He has performed with Theater West Virginia in acclaimed production like Honey in the Rock, Romeo and Juliet, and Tarzan. Since August 2021, he has contributed his craftsmanship to over 15 productions as the lead carpenter. He's not only a master of the stage, Riley has also taken on various roles as a swing, understudy for Riverside, including a memorable portrayal as Mr. R.H. Macy in Miracle on 34th Street. Now, without further ado, let's turn our attention to Mr. Cooper. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Riley. I was Averett University class of 2021. Uh, when I, my Averett journey started at VTA, which is a theater conference in the state of Virginia. And part of that, high school seniors will audition for schools. That was where I was introduced to Averett and to Mr. Breen, who's one of the professors at Averett. And after visiting the campus and seeing, it's a very nice campus, it's suburban, it's in a beautiful city. Danville was a place I'd never been to before, but immediately fell in love with. Um, and then Giuseppe is very right. Averett Theater is willing to let you work as hard as you want to. I mean, I remember right out the gate, we were working on Schoolhouse Rock. I don't even think I've been in college a full week yet. And it does take off very quickly. I think I think I might have done around 20 shows. I know that COVID happened my junior year, so that might have changed them to, into a lot of scenes. But even then, I know as a directing major, by the end of my senior year, how my directing classes were going, I would basically walk in with a script to Mr. Finney's office and say, I want to do this scene. And he'd say, OK, find your actors. And then he let me do it. And so I would throw things together and we would work on them. And something that Giuseppe said that was very true is they do want to train versatile theater practitioners. They want people that can act and do carpentry or can act and sew. And that was my thing. My first tech theater job was the Averett assistantship, was building the sets that I was going to perform on in the shows there. And now that seems to be what I'm doing at Riverside, which is a regional theater up here in Stafford. I, I built uh, Jersey Boys was the 15th set that I've built. And actually, in about 15 minutes, I'm going to go on as Norm Waxman and a few other parts in it. So Averett definitely got me prepared for that. Um, I think that Theater is something that you find out very quickly at Averett. It is hard work, but it is so rewarding. And I know that the faculty there were very passionate. A lot of them were alumni. They cared very much about putting on the best shows that they could. And there were so many opportunities. Actually, a lot of people here at work uh, have agreed with me. Smaller schools are very advantageous. Because you could find yourself hopping into things that you've never done before. And then suddenly realizing that you like them. And then you want to do them for two or three years. And suddenly that becomes something that you do. And I think that Averett is a place full of wonderful opportunities. So that you can do those things. Um, Riley, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and joining us today. That was very informative and good luck on the performance. Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Uh, next, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Janet Phillips, an esteemed figure in sorry, an esteemed figure in the field of musical education and leadership, serving an associate as an associate professor of music and director of bands at Avery University. Dr. Phillips has pioneered the university's first ever band program since its, 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 its inception in fall 2015, starting with only five members and expanding it to over 40 instrumentalists. Dr. Phillips holds a Bachelor's of Music Therapy from Florida State University, 
a master of flute performance and a doctor of musical arts from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, as well as a master of education from Abert University. She is affiliated with prestigious organizations, including the National Association of Music Educators and the College Band Directors National Association. I would like to welcome our distinguished speaker to share insights and expertise, Dr. Phillips. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk about the music department. Um, it is my favorite place in the world to be besides at home with my puppy on my lap. So um, I spend lots of time here and I love being here. Um, we have a lot to offer students in the music department. We have instrumental or vocal performance majors. We now have instrumental music education and we are working toward choral music education as well. We have a church music major, we have the music minor, and we have um, the the band, which I started a few years back. And I have to say, um, to right now is band class. So across the other side of the building, my students are in band right now and two of our conducting students, well, they were conducting, they finished all their conducting classes, but they are music majors. They want to be music educators and they are getting, continuing to get podium time uh, even after they finish their classes, because I think that's important for them. So um, they're having a good time with that. Could we move to slide two, please? Or the next slide? I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so when you think about a major in music, there are a lot of things you should ask yourself. Do you want to be a performer? If you do want to be a performer, do you want to be a soloist? Would you like to play in ensembles or both? I do it both ways. I play as a soloist and I perform in ensembles. Uh, my most recent gig was an opera in December in Greensboro. Um, what genres and styles of music do you have an interest in, in? Do you want to study jazz? Do you want to study classical music or modern music? So you want to think about those sorts of things. If you want to be a teacher, what level do you want to teach? And I will go ahead and say, even if you're a performer, whatever we do in music, almost always there's some teaching involved. If you know how to do music, People are going to find you and say, hey, can you show me how to do this? Can you teach me to do this? So there's almost always some teaching involved, even if you're a performer. So what level do you want to teach? Do you want to teach elementary school? I'm going to tell you that is the most important place to be, to get our young people in love with music right off the bat. The next most important place to be, I think, is in beginning band. So fifth grade, sixth grade, teaching those littles how to play. Um, that's very important, very important place for people to be. Um, and, or do you want to uh, work in a high school and teach high school band? And do you think about what's involved in that? You have the symphonic band, you'll have a jazz band, you'll maybe have two sit down bands, symphonic and concert, wind ensemble, whatever. Um, and then you will have a marching band most likely. And so that takes a lot of um, variety of experiences. Um, and speaking of experiences, we try to get our students into internships. We have internships with churches. We, our students go into schools. We've got some students just on their own out working with local high school bands and getting those experiences that they're going to need in the future. Um, so do you wanna be a conductor? Um, orchestra or band. Uh, if you are interested in worship music, do you want to be a church music leader or play in a church orchestra? Are you into arts administration? And that is uh, the important role of making shows happen and finding the money to put them on. Uh, and of course, there's composing and arranging. People a lot of times think of, you know, the music that we study in a music department as old music or dead people music, not at all. Uh, we try to stay hooked into and in relationships with current composers, modern composers who are writing music today. Um, we even have a professor who is probably going to start teaching um, composition classes very soon. 
Another option that you might want to use your undergraduate degree for is to get ready for graduate school. Um, and they're playing in the band right now is uh, one of our students. When I started the band, he was in high school. So he went through high school with this band. He went through college with this band. Uh, he has gone and gotten a master's degree in music education. And while he's finishing that up between then and getting his first job, he is back playing with this band. So we really are a family. Um, all of us are are close. We we stay close touch with our alumni. Um, we do letters and job recommendations and whatever our current and former students need, we're there for it. Um, there's a picture on the next slide of, of our chorus and Dr. Ann Lewis in the blue there. So I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities and benefits of pursuing your degree at Averett. So the Averett Singers Ensemble has existed since the beginning of Averett's music department, and I don't know how long that is, many, many more years than I've been around. Um, they've sung in a lot of places, including New Orleans, twice in Carnegie Hall, New York City, and in churches throughout the region. They provide service to the university community by singing pre-game music for each athletic team at least once per season. The Avery Band Program has been in existence since August 2015. It's a fast-growing ensemble. Like, like he said, we started with five. Um, we were at about 50 before the pandemic, and of course that knocked a lot of programs back a little bit, but we're back growing again. And it's very unique to sit in here and do this and listen to them playing across the hall. They sound fantastic. Um, so we play a, a lot of popular music. We play traditional um, and new band literature. Um, we have breakout groups. And during the pandemic, we had a rock band. They went to an open mic and performed and were offered paid gigs when they came off the stage. So that was excellent. We've had jazz band at different times, just whatever students want at a given time. If there are enough students that want to do a jazz band, we're going to have a jazz band. Um, and we've done small chamber groups as well. It just depends on what the students are into. Excuse me. We perform several concerts each academic year on and off campus. We do service concerts at assisted living facilities. Um, and we're large enough now that we have the full band, which is Averett students and community members. Uh, and then we also have a student only band that is going around like we we just played um, at another open mic. And we're also going to go play soon at a, um, a preschool to get those kids interested in music. Um, we play for commencement. Um, several of our Averett student band members are also musicians around the area working professionally, even though they're still students. Um, here you'll find small classes with lots of individualized attention and instruction. Um, I think I talked about our real world experiences with the internships. We connect our students to volunteer and paid gigs um, and opportunities on campus like conducting a big full band your very first semester in conducting class, uh, that things that don't really happen in larger schools. Um, some of our music graduates are cruise ship musicians, music educators from elementary to college level, directors of music ministries, doctoral graduate students, and professional performers of all kinds of music. Our faculty come from top music schools, um, like UNC Greensboro, for example. Dr. Ann Lewis is a music theater. Uh, she does music theater at Interlochen Arts Camp every summer in Michigan. She sings in bel canto. Um, she directs local theater groups. Um, I play recitals and gigs with opera orchestras and things like that. I teach at UNCG summer music camp every summer. I teach flute clinics and master classes. Um, we have D Dr. Deetra Davis. She is a professional opera singer. Um, she was the lead role in the opera that I played in December, and she also teaches at UNCG summer music camp. 
So we are active professionals in our fields as well as teachers. Um, and we're passionate about giving our students the best possible support, instruction, and encouragement to prepare them for their careers in music. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, allow me to introduce now uh, Nate Hester, who is the chairperson of the Visual Arts Department at Averitt University. Mr. Hester holds a Master's of Fine Arts degree from Boston University. His artistic prowess has been showcased in numerous exhibitions with his work's findings a permanent place in steam collections such as the Fogg Art Museum at Harvard University, the Allen Memorial Art Gallery at Oberlin College, and the libraries of New York and New York. I would like to now direct our attention to Mr. Hester. Thanks so much, Dr. Navin, and welcome to everybody again. I I'd just like to pause for a minute and just uh, if I think you all at home can see that there's 12 adult professionals here to greet you. Um, and I don't want to be crass, but I want to be real talk. Like, let's say our average salary is $50 an hour. That's $700 for this hour. The point is, there's a lot of smiling faces. Like, we want you. Averett University wants you. And we really want you to come see us. Um, so Giuseppe has spoken so beautifully uh, about the theater program, uh, and, and, and Dr. Philip Janet has talked about the, the music uh, and other performing uh, art programs. Um, we really hope that you'll come visit us on the 17th. Come see the campus. It's gorgeous. Um, and since we're on this slide about me and how the campus, um, I think, relates to who I am is that I'm sort of a local boy. My dad was born at Danville Regional, just down the street. Um, my grandmother, his mother, went to school here at Averett. My family farm is just across the North Carolina line. I'll take a pause so I can breathe. Um, <laughs> and I have not been trained in vocal performance. <laughs> um, uh, and so I bring a hometown feel and yet I have international reach. I've lived in Boston and Houston and New York and San Francisco and Paris and Kyoto, Japan. And I think many of our faculty and our campus is that way. It's down home and it has international scope. Um, I do suggest that you snag this website of mine and go take a look. Um, I'm a new faculty member and you'll be really involved in me and my craft. Um, uh, I was largely hired to do two things. One is to bring uh, a, a historical perspective to traditional studio craft, paint, draw, sculpt, um, express your own vision. Um, and secondarily, to bridge the gap to modern cutting edge technology. So that's enough about me. But I, if I were you in high school and, and considering a career in the arts and a career in the visual arts and digital design, these are the things I'd like for you to consider. Why, why study visual arts? Why draw? Why paint? Why animate? Why do motion graphics? All right, here's what I'm committed to. Increasing our capacity of our citizenry for empathy. Now, that may sound philosophical and not land with you at all. But in the visual arts classroom, you learn to express yourself and you learn to become more and more sensitive to the expressions of others. If a democracy is going to work, if America is going to be the greatest project uh -huh. ever on the face of the earth, we got to get better about expressing ourselves beautifully, truthfully, and being open to the beautiful and truthful expressions of others. So that's my little personal pitch. The other thing that may land more with you is that the future is infographic. I got this little Iron Man floating around. And I don't know if you've seen these new Apple glasses. Mine are like very cheap and $35 because I fall asleep on them and they break. But, but these new Apple glasses, you click on them, the future of these, the next maybe three or four iterations of them. And everything that you see will be data. You'll be able to see Giuseppe's blue glasses and where he bought them and when he bought them and how much he bought them for and what you can get. We're gonna be overwhelmed with visual information. So why not make that beautiful? You may have heard the expression, we are what we eat. I also feel that way about the spaces we occupy. So why not make them beautiful? Why not make the glasses that are gonna, the, the digital screens that are gonna be our future, why not make them gorgeous? The last point here is workforce readiness. I want you to come and study with me and my amazing team in the visual arts. Um, 
just to get some personal time to learn how in this busy world to self care, to self soothe, um, to enjoy the things you create. Um, but I also want you to leave here with a job. Um, I have struggled and succeeded in 20 years uh, as a professional artist and a professional educator. Um, and I want you to have less struggles. Um, I have a great amount of reach to get you jobs in New York, um, but I want to talk a little bit more about workforce readiness in a specific way. So I'm going to ask Dr. Navin to show the next screen. Um, and I'm very happy if we just click through this so it populates the whole thing. I don't know where you are. Like when I was your age, I just was mad at my parents and confused about my own identity. So I just sat in a corner and drew. Um, I was not thinking about careers, but I wish I had. And I want you to come in with eyes wide open. The average annual salary for an art gallery, if you want to run your own art gallery, $82,000 a year. That's not terrible. Uh, I'm not mad at that. Um, a fine artist. So like what I mostly do, that's about, that's about, that's true for me. That I, if, if, if I made $53,000 a year selling art, that's good for me. I hope to propel you to even greater heights than that. Uh, an architect, the average starting annual salary is 103. An art professor across the board is 87. Um, a museum curator is 78. I want you just to get a sense of what this is um, for what your investment is here. Not only should you love it, but you should also think about what you do in terms of how it's going to sustain your life. Um, in America, we have this idea of like, if we do what we love all the time, we work. The thing that I don't love about that is that it becomes your identity. The French, who I spent a lot of time living in Paris, they work to make their life possible. They, they just differentiate that. Um, and so I think sometimes talking in these dollars and cents, even though it's not poetic, um, hopefully that's helpful for you all. A few other ones that aren't on this list, an art grant writer makes 51,000, an interior designer makes 68. A user interface designer makes 86, a motion graphics designer makes 92, and a augmented reality virtual reality makes 83. Um, anyhow, uh, hopefully this is helpful information. I think we can look at the next slide to talk a little more specifically about what happens here at Averitt in the art program. Um, and um, as I said before, I can draw anything that I see and I can teach you to draw anything that you see. Um, I also uh, am a CGI animator, um, and so um, the hope is that here there's going to be a blended curriculum. If you go to many art schools, if you go to VCU or if you go to SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design, not to tempt you in another direction, um, oftentimes you have to specialize. And like Giuseppe said, like you get to be well-rounded, a Swiss army knife. You will do lots of things for your Bachelors of Fine Arts um, here, uh, both in the traditional setting and cutting-edge tech. Uh, if you come on the 17th, we're going to do a really cool thing with motion capture. You guys are going to design your own avatars in a collaborative way. We're going to scan it into a system, and then we're going to hook you up to a machine where you can dance, and it'll make your avatar dance on the screen. It's a little bit of a cheap bar trick, um, but it's super cool tech uh, that you'll get to experience if you come on the 17th. Um, the other component of the program and the curriculum is a robust project-based service learning internship network that'll help you career path. Um, so it may not, I mean, you may not be, not everyone is on the trajectory. I would love it if you showed at Gagosian in New York. Like that's sort of my goal for each of you. But more than likely, I also want you to have an opportunity to design logos for the local Toyota dealership. Um, and you'll have a chance to do that while in school here. Um, I really believe that what you're doing right now, it, it, that a four-year-old is capable of making as beautiful a thing as I am. There's not an age limit on genius. And I want your work up on Averett campus and I want it up in Danville. And so there's lots of regional exhibition opportunities. One of the cool things about Danville is that you're, that you're in a small, fairly secluded and rural community, but you're within reach of Roanoke and Richmond and Greensboro and Raleigh. So you can go see great theater, you can go see great musical performances, uh, and you can go see great museums and galleries. And I'm gonna take you to them. Um, and then I think it's important, I, I gotta just name, I'm a white guy. I'm a white guy from the South. Um, but I'm super committed uh, to uh, an inclusive community. And if there's hiring opportunities, I'm a, I have a commitment to that. But as it exists now, uh, as your full-time faculty member and our adjunct team, we're a diverse, justice-minded, uh, and inclusive uh, faculty. Um, and that's a big commitment of ours. Um, I think I have just one um, last note, Dr. Navin, 
just to show a cool thing that's happening, just a brief snapshot. We're launching this year our first uh, inaugural Art in Action Lecture Series. Um, my great friend, Joel Christian Gill, featured on the left with his book, most recent book underneath, stamped from the beginning with Ibram Kendi, who wrote the books. I'm not sure if you know him, How to Raise an Anti-Racist. Um, uh, stamped from the beginning um, is a Jefferson Davis quote um, that Joel kind of flips on it on its head. Um, and, uh, so this upcoming March 21st, if you're close, we'd love to have you, um, for a lecture series and Andrew Aiden featured on the right was John Lewis's congressional rep. Um, and I think you can see his name on these award-winning books called March, uh, and then run that detail the civil rights movement. Um, so they're going to be here to talk about cartooning to save the world. Um, how a graphic novel can be used as a social, a change, a social, a social change agent. Um, so hopefully that gives you some insight for my enthusiasm for art, for what art can do in the world, and how you can fit into that. Um, I really hope that you sign up to come on the 17th and we get to welcome you to Avery. Nate, I am inspired. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, I'm sure that the students are as well. Um, so it, it is my pleasure now to introduce the second alumna of Avery University, Skylin Oswald, a graphic designer and illustrator who graduated from Avery University not long ago in 2022 with a BA in Fine Arts and a minor in Communications. After completing her studies, Skylin embarked on a 10-month journey with a Disney College program in Orlando, Florida, she then ventured to New York City for a three-month internship with Airy by American Eagle, where she honed her skills in creating apparel graphics. Presently, she thrives as a graphic designer for Nike License Leaks, channeling her artistic fur into designing NFL apparel. She will not be giving you Nike shoes today as part of this presentation, but I'd like to welcome her to present. Skylin? Sorry, I was muted. Hi, everyone. I'm Skylin. Um, so I would hope to think that maybe a few of you on here can really relate with how I was introduced to Averett. My introduction to Averett was actually an email in my inbox that said, hi, we want you to play volleyball for us. And so that was super exciting. And I knew for a long time that I wanted to go into art. That wasn't really a question for me. My choice was between going to school at Averitt or going to a different school with a graphic design program. And I remember I went to a bigger school for a tour and because everybody wanted to go to a bigger school, that was like the thing. And I had a horrible, horrible time. I, I was so exhausted. The tour was terrible. I did not feel included. Nobody answered any of my questions and it was a disaster. And not saying all other schools are like that, but I came to Averitt for my, I got a personal tour because through the volleyball team, they offered to give me an individual one. And whenever I got to the campus, I just absolutely fell in love. It was amazing. And it was so small and I felt so included and everybody I talked to was so nice and welcoming. And that was so important to me. And then it came to deciding my degree, and obviously, whenever I said I wanted to be a fine arts major, everybody was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like, are you sure about that? Like, really think that through. Um, but I felt like with that, I could go in so many different directions because I didn't really, I didn't know I wanted to be a graphic designer at first. I could illustrate children's books. I could animate. I could be a freelance artist. There were so many routes I could have taken, and I felt like fine arts was going to cover that all so I could be whoever I wanted to be at the end of the day. Um, once I got to Averitt, I fell in love with the volleyball team. I fell in love with the environment. I loved the arts department. Um, I was really involved. I was an RA for a year and I absolutely loved it. Um, and my favorite part about being a part of the arts program at Averitt was that I was not a name on a piece of paper. I was a person. I remember I was getting ready to graduate and I was trying to get into graduate schools. 
And I got rejected from a few and I was really destroyed because I didn't know what I was going to do. And my professor, he told me, he was like, I can look at a Skyline original in a room full of artwork and I can pick it out. He was like, because I just, you are so talented. I don't know why these schools aren't taking you because you deserve to go be great. And I didn't go into college as a confident human being. I was very shy, very nervous. And now I like to consider myself a very confident person. And I think I gained that confidence from Averett because I feel like if I was at a bigger school, my art professor would not have been able to pick out a Skyland original. Like, I don't feel like I would have made that connection with a professor at a bigger school. I felt like the family environment at Averett was what really gave that to me and what gave me the confidence to go do these amazing things that I've done. Um, And to tell you a little bit about the amazing things I've been able to do with my art degree, I did right after college go to Disney. And that was a little bit of a detour um, because that really had nothing to do with my artistic talents. It was more of a networking thing for me. Um, I did get into graduate school. For those of you who are wondering, I am doing my master's for illustration currently. Um, So after Disney, I went and spent this past summer at American Eagle. I know many of you know what that is, I'm sure. I worked specifically for Airy and I did apparel graphics. So a little insight onto what you can do with graphic design. I do graphics for t-shirts, hats, leggings, anything like that. Um, I actually just had a hat release on the Airy website. So that's really exciting that I get to do those things. Um, I now work for Nike in the NFL. I don't do shoes, but if you're going to watch the Super Bowl this coming weekend, And you see that winner get that t-shirt. That's all me, baby. So (laughs) I definitely, those graphics, graphic design is everywhere. Art is everywhere. And I think that's really important for people to realize. Um, Because like I said, whenever you decide you want to major in art, it's kind of like a sketchy slope. People are like, what are you going to do with that? I don't, but everything needs to be visually appealing. You go to the store to buy a product. Are you going to pick the one that looks not so cute? Or are you going to pick the one that you're like, oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Those colors are amazing. Like your eye is automatically drawn to things that look nicer. And at the end of the day, it's graphic designers and artists that do that. It might have a really fancy name, like visual communicator or something like that. Or even social media. You're scrolling through social media somebody has to design those posts. And I think those are things that I didn't know coming into college that I felt like I learned through my experiences. And I, you have to do things that are outside of your comfort zone. I can't tell you how many tears were shed at the pottery wheel, but I am so thankful for that well-rounded experience because you wouldn't think ceramics helps you out in a design mindset but it really does because whenever you're designing you need to see how things are two-dimensionally and three-dimensionally like those things really did help so I would say my advice for future students oh is that um you no, really no, have fine. faith in yourself <laughs> you have faith in yourself and believe that you can do anything because you can and I say go to Averitt at least give it a shot look at the campus and you will feel right at home And then also, I have a very unique name. So look me up if you ever have any questions. Um, Just type me in and I'll pop up. So thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm definitely watching the Super Bowl because my team is in it. So thank you for your work. Really appreciate it. Um, Our last speaker is Matthew Mann, the Director of Admission at Avery University. A native of Danville, Virginia, Matthew Mann holds a special connection to Avery University, having graduated from this institution in 2008 with a BS degree in global marketing management. Matthew's commitment to the university and his passion for helping prospective students is evident in his role as a director of admissions. It is now my privilege to turn our attention to Mr. Mann. Thank you, Dr. Novin. And again, welcome everyone. I um I just today's very uh very important to me as a self-proclaimed self-proclaimed band geek and 
uh, amateur guitar builder. This is something that I hold pretty, pretty dear to heart. So um, we're going to go through a couple of things regarding the admissions processes, some quick financial aid type of tips, things like that. But as Nate had mentioned earlier about the visit, I want to spend a lot of time talking about the college visit and why we at Averett think it's so important and uh, kind of share some information about that. So first things first, when we come to application processes and timelines, we instantly tell families the first thing you should be doing is visiting campuses. We always talk about our bad cliche is you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't buy a house without having an inspection or walking through it. You wouldn't buy a car without test driving it. So why would you come to college without seeing it? So we, uh, we de definitely encourage families to start visiting colleges if they haven't done so already. And that also helps narrow down the schools that you're going to apply to. I'm not sure if you all are aware, but with the FAFSA, you can, uh, you can submit your, that information up to 20 schools, which means that students apply to lots of schools. And so how are you going to narrow those down without seeing them, things along those lines? But that's a, a, an easier way of narrowing down some of those application processes. Lastly, and next we're talking about how to apply for some financial aid. Like I mentioned, some tips and, and tricks when it comes to scholarships and aid. And then there, you're ready to roll and you've picked your schools. Time to get started and go from there. So moving to the next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about, again, the importance of that college visit. When it comes to types of visits, there's so many different ways you can visit a college campus. You can come through a personal visit, as Skylar mentioned. Um, we do that for everyone, whether it's a student athlete, whether it's a, a specific student coming to meet with the music professors or whatever it might be. Every single student here has the opportunity to have that personalized one-on-one -on -one tour experience. We know not everyone feels comfortable coming in a big group. So we like, we like to give you all that, that, that opportunity. Speaking of the big groups, you do have that chance as well when it comes to an open house and things along those lines. Some schools are still gonna offer virtual events, but I'm gonna share with you some details why, why we encourage those on-campus uh, sessions. Also, you have things like auditions, like we're gonna talk about, as well as scholarship days, recruiting events, all different types of, of college visit opportunities you may have. Um, and so there's different types of ways, like I said, that you're gonna be invited to campus to, uh, to have a different experience. During the visit, um, I, I quickly talk about, I've been doing this for quite some time and I, I have lots of students who walk in the door who either give you that deer in headlights look or, or don't really have any questions. And I often tell them, I speak to the student directly and say, this is a big decision for you. I'm, I'm, want, I'm wanting to, to help you through this process and counsel you through this if you have those questions. So what I mean by that is before you prepare to go to a college visit, start thinking about what those questions that are important to you, whether it's, I want to know what social life is like here. I want to know what academic programs they have, obviously things along those lines. But again, what's the art department like? What's the professor like? What's the chairperson like? Is, is he, he or she someone I can connect with um, when it comes to, to me practicing my art? So all those are things that you need to come to that visit prepared to ask. Um, and then we at Aver, I can speak on behalf of us, we have the ability to offer all of those questions, answers to those questions while you're here. So if you want to meet with a professor while you're here on campus, it's something we're willing to do. After the visit, again, what is the, what's, what, what are those things, those next steps to follow up on? Is it, is it, am I ready to apply? Is it financial aid next steps? All those things are things that we at Averett can help you do, and any admissions office should be able to, or be willing to help you with, but we here take great pride in the fact that we're counselors. We're happy to walk you through that process. This quick little graphic over here on the right just shows the importance of, of the visit in that decision-making process. So as you look here, as we've transitioned from virtual visits and, and virtual tours and things along those lines, people still want to see college campus with their eyes. And I think college campuses are the best way, excuse me, those personal visits, in-person visits were the best way to understand, as I mentioned before, what culture is like. And I think that's something that um, a lot of people, as Skyler mentioned, don't go into a visit thinking, right? They have an idea, this is what a visit is gonna be like. And they get there, they go, nope, this isn't exactly what I thought. And I'm gonna have, um, this may not be exactly what I was looking for and things transition. I think about my experience when I, uh, I visited colleges, I spent, Every Saturday, tailgate the football game here at a big state school in Virginia with my dad. And when I took my first college tour, 18 years of thinking of where I wanted to go to school went out the window. And so I think that's important for you all to realize that gut reaction happened for a reason. So we just encourage you all to trust that. 
So I'm going to close real quick when it comes to, like, as Nate had mentioned, as a couple of professors had mentioned, um, February 17th. So this is my personal invitation to you all. I want you all to join us for the celebration on the expression of art, the Arts at Avery Day on the 17th of February. This event will start this at, at 11 o'clock Eastern at our, at our um, Welcome Center in historic main hall on Avery's campus. You can't really miss it. It's the one with the big columns and things along those lines. Um, but during this day, you're going to discover the vibrant world of the arts and cultures that we showcase and, talent, and the talents and the passions of our students here. Um, you'll see performances, whether it's through our theater department, they have a production of Sylvia going on that night, whether it's demonstrations through the art department, as Nate mentioned, with animations and things along those lines, or whether it's meeting and auditioning with the music department, seeing those facilities, hearing students perform, and, and really have deep, diving deeper with the faculty during that time. So as I mentioned, there'll be some live performances um, going on through the theater. We encourage you all to stay and hang out with that. Um, get behind the scenes, see what see what's going on, see what post-production, pre-production, uh, what's going on behind the scenes during the show, the stuff like we want you guys to experience. Nate did a really good job mentioning the things that they're going to offer when it comes to those animation experiences. Um, and then, like as I mentioned with music, they're going to have those as well. Now, lastly, I wanted to share, if you're prepared to audition those days, just some quick things to prepare for. If for theater, they're going to want you to prepare at least a 90-second monologue, Bring your headshots and resumes and things along those lines. Visual arts, uh, you'll be preparing a portfolio, uh, excuse me, a review of your portfolio. So making sure you have those things ready and bring it along with you. And then for music, like I said, they have a prepared piece that um, we ask you to bring with you when it comes for your audition. Uh, music faculty, excuse me, arts faculty are happy to share more details about what they're expecting or what they would like to see from you that day. Uh, but just again, want to make sure you guys didn't miss this opportunity to celebrate the arts and culture here at Averitt. Um, also, like I said, see our incredibly talented students. Uh, so again, mark the calendars for that day. It's, no, it's February 17th. Again, start at 11 o'clock Eastern. And again, we just, um, as Dr. Novin has pulled up here, here's some details of the day and just some kind of itinerary of the event. Uh, but again, we're happy to share more details um, about those days. Lastly, the one thing I would mention when it comes to that is scholarship money. Um, we're very fortunate that we have dived in head first into the arts and we have invested money into the arts departments here at Averitt. So when you audition here, we can guarantee a scholarship. Um, and then as well as you, research, you receive all types of uh, benefits for visiting. For, so for example, we have the visit grant here at Averitt that you would receive just for, for showing up for a visit and, and, and hanging out with us for the day. Some of you all may be qualified for scholarship day. Uh, which is the day that we will be having personal invitations and um, interviews with faculty. You guys can do double duty and knock those out in one day. So you get all this done in one visit. So uh, we want to invite you to campus at one day, knock out everything you need to do, and again, have the opportunity to earn lots of scholarship money in that one time. So I'm happy to stick around and answer questions about those days. Uh, but Dr. Newman, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you talked extensively about the campus visit. Uh, time and time again, alumni would say what really made them convinced to attend Averitt was the campus visit, actually seeing the students, seeing the faculty and experiencing it. So just to make that day easy, right after this, shortly, you're going to receive a text with a link to actually uh, register for the campus visit. Um, you will also receive an email. Now you're going to see on your screen a poll it's a short poll, please complete it so we know you've attended uh, this workshop. And, and I have several really, really good questions uh, from our panelists. There's been over 50 questions so far uh, throughout the presentation. The first question is for you, Skylan, which is, um, love your experience and your journey. Could you tell us a little bit more about how did you how were you able to secure a job at Nike? Talk about that journey uh, that this student wants to know. Yeah, um, sure. So I am going to be completely honest. My job with Nike was kind of just luck. Um, I, I scoured LinkedIn all day, every day, um, especially because my, my time with American Eagle, although it was amazing and I loved the company, it was an internship, so I had to have something afterwards. 
Um, and it was also in New York and I was not a huge, New York was just not for me. It could be for somebody else, but it wasn't for me. And so, um, I scoured LinkedIn and I, um, I reached out to people that I felt like would help me network through that. And I applied and then they asked me for an intern, like an interview. And I remember, um, one of my interview questions was they asked me, because originally I was supposed to be working through Nike for the NCAA. And I was like, oh, well, that's perfect. I played college volleyball. Like uh, I go to Averitt and they were like, oh, where's Averitt? And I told them and they were like, oh, we've never heard of that before. Usually when people apply, it's from like SCAD or places like that. Um, And I think that like kind of helped a little bit they were like oh she's she's different she's not like everybody else um and so I really think that putting myself out there is what landed me that job because I feel like most people even like pre-college pre-job life me would have been like oh my gosh that job posting is for Nike I'm not gonna get that like I shouldn't even apply But I was like, I saw that posting and I was like, I'm qualified. I feel like I can do it. So they should feel like I can do it. And I applied. And I mean, from there on, it only just proved that knowing my worth made me more than capable of doing things that I couldn't even dreamed of when I was younger. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Giuseppe, there's a question for you. And the question goes like this. I'll do my best to articulate. I love theater, but my parents are concerned about my career track. Help me convince them. (laughs) I will do my best. That is that is the that is the hardest thing. Um, So I struggled as a student the same way. So I know 100% what that feels like. Uh, my parents wanted me to go into computers. Uh, and both my parents were chefs. Why did they want me to go to be a, a restaurateur? I don't know. Um, but they wanted me to go to computers. And I I had the passion for, for, for music and for performance and for, and for theater. Um, and it took a lot of... Uh, persuasive arguments, uh, very loud persuasive arguments were Italian, um, to convince them to let me follow my passion and to reassure them that I would find work as a performer. And four years of college, uh, my, I want to say it was my third or fourth audition um out of graduating i got it and i was working at the barter theater in virginia as a musical director and i did a summer there and then i got a job uh on the national tour of uh, a christmas carol and so once they saw that oh i was able to pay my bills with you know this degree in theater that i had they kind of finally, well, they never really understood what I did, but they kind of understood that, okay, you can make a successful living doing the arts, doing theater, doing music. Um, It took more convincing when I told them that I wanted to go to graduate school, but that's another story. Um, I think the best path is to convince them that success doesn't have to be broadway that is that is the very tip top of the pyramid there there are hundreds of regional theaters across the country that pay professional actors very well and you can make a living being a performer you could also teach as well and after performing and after touring for so many years i decided that i want to pursue teaching and that was my path um but my experiences in undergrad in musical theater in lighting design in sound design 
prepared me to walk into a theater and be like, what jobs do you have? What do you need done? Because I can do it. And so having those skills and having that skill set is what really did it for me. And I think after I got that first job, after I got that first paycheck, they eased off. I want to jump in really quickly here to answer Giuseppe's question just for the arts in general. I have a 14-year-old son, and man, there is part of me that wants him to be a dentist. (laughs) <laughs> there is part of me that wants him to have an easy life and make people smile and get rich and have lunch at the country club and just have comfort. Mm-hmm. Like there is part of me as a parent that wants him to have a secure future. Mm-hmm. And then the real deeper, truer part of me wants him to make his own unique, blissful contribution that only he can make to the world. And mm-hmm. that's my argument. And our parents want the best for us. So I, I understand that. And I understand that they want us to be to have a comfortable life. So I understand that that struggle and the parents coming from there. So yeah, I get it. Thank you both. Nate, um, I'll I'll go to you because it's about a student asked, do I need a portfolio to apply to the fine art program? And if I am admitted, do you help me find an internship while I'm at Averitt? Uh, yeah, so two good questions. The historical trajectory of, of admission at Averitt has been to submit a portfolio review. It's more my position that it helps you secure a scholarship. I'm, if you want to come study art here, I'm going to accept you if I have Matthew and the admissions team's blessing. But if I can offer you money, you'll need a scholarship, you'll need a portfolio. Um, and the more professional, the more uh, refined, the title, the dimensions, including that, showing a wide range of work, uh, some, some draftsmanship, some photography, the, the, and, and your real voice, showing your skill set technically, but also showing your emotive capabilities um, is really what I'd be looking for to be able to let you walk away on the 17th with $5,000 towards your tuition. Um uh, and that's not all within me, but that's what that's that's my criteria. Um, in terms of most of the internships currently that we have lined up, uh, we have a phenomenal department here. Uh, JP Penland is just doing tremendous work in helping me secure paid internships. Currently, most of uh, our markets are are non paid internships. Um, but I don't know, like in, I don't know when Skyland was here, if Infinity Global, we have in, we have one of the world's leaders in brand packaging just a few blocks away from us, um, down in the river district. Um, and I'm starting to forge partnerships with them and they have money to spend on our students. Uh, they need skill sets that we don't quite have yet. We're going to be rolling out digital design in a more, uh, full throated way next year. Um, and as soon as those classes are live, they're willing to pay for us. So if you were to sign on as an incoming freshman next year, you would definitely have paid internships by your sec by your sophomore year. That's my goal. That's my that's my that's what I'd like to be able to offer you. Um, and I'm pretty good for my word. Thank you. So I, I I know we're over a little bit, but let me ask these last two questions. If uh, th- there seems to be a lot of resiliency with our participants wanting to hear these answers, so. I'll take a stab at this, and and, and I hope uh, everyone doesn't mind. Uh, and this this is for the music department. And the question is, what does a typical audition for the music major look like? Thank you, Dr. Novin. I'm so happy to do that. And, and just say hello to everyone. Dr. Phillips and I are kind of tag teaming for this because she had band class, and the Avert Singers had a performance at the wrestling match. Uh, for the end of this. So if, if you have difficulty hearing me, it's because it sounds like the wrestlers are doing an amazing job uh, <laughs> just next door here at the North Campus. For the music audition scholars, uh, for the scholarships, we want you to have a prepared piece that shows you off. So if you're a singer, whatever you sing that shows your best range and shows your personality. If you're a pianist, uh, what have you been studying and what shows you off? If you're an instrumentalist, same thing. We want to see you and your passion, we're not looking for technical perfection. We're looking to see the music come out of you as you perform for us. Fantastic. And last question, Matthew, someone would like to know, can I still apply for fall 2024? Absolutely. So 
Schools like Averett, we're on what's called rolling admissions. So we actually read applications every single day. So we're not a school where you apply and wait months and months and months to find out a decision. So the quicker you're able to get us that information, the faster we're able to make you a decision. Our applications are actually open uh, pretty much uh, up through the summer. So May 1st is the national decision, decision deadline. So most students have made the decision by May 1st. But our application stays open because, as Nate mentioned, we have plenty of space in these departments and we're happy happy to have you. And so, yep, we, we our application will be open probably through the summer. Well, I want to thank our distinguished speakers and over 70 participants took part in this presentation. I want to thank everyone for a couple of things. Please make an effort to go on the campus day on February 17th. I guarantee you, you will not regret it. It's gonna be a phenomenal experience. Secondly, here's the email and the phone number for every for all of our panelists. We, we didn't we didn't wanna put a lot of onus on the alum, but uh, the, the, the lead for all the departments are here. Feel free to contact them directly. This is the beginning of your Averett personal experience. Thank you everyone and good evening.